So, hello ladies and gentlemen, Reginald Scott here, and we're off to the centre, Bandar, the capital, to watch a fireworks display to commemorate the opening of the new bridge. And I'm going by bicycle because this, this is the mess of traffic uh, that's a result of this, uh, this fireworks display. And I thought anyone who wants to drive into this was crazy, so I thought I'll go by bike, which is a much better option, even though it has been raining. Cycling pretty much always wins when it comes to going into a city. So this is us. Gonna be a bit chaotic, that's for sure. Coming through. Wow, I've never seen it like this before, but everybody in the whole of Brunei wants to see this show. It's gonna be an incredible fireworks display. This bridge is probably the biggest structural engineering project, project undertaken by the Sultanate in many, many years. In fact, other than the road network, I think this is probably the biggest. There we go, nearly killed some Indians. Oh. So I don't know what to expect tonight with regards to uh, the fireworks, but it should be pretty good. As you can see, literally all of this traffic wants to get there. All of it. So. People are gonna be super pissed. Because they can't get where they're going. And uh, I'm just gonna slip right through. <laughs> it's actually quite dry. I thought it was gonna be raining but it's actually dry, which I'm very fortunate for. It's been raining heavily all day. Hopefully the fireworks didn't get wet. But yeah, it's been raining heavily all day. And uh, man, I thought I was gonna get drenched on the way in, but it looks like I'm gonna be all right. Looks like good luck is on my side so far. As long as I don't get hit by a car, we should be good. bike skills going on here tonight <laughs> now originally I wanted my wife to come with me on the bike she walked in earlier she managed to find parking somewhere and actually walked in so well done to her because everywhere else is just gridlock now cutting this way and that. I say everybody's trying to get there. Got to make sure that uh, people see us, know we're around. Don't run me down. Roads are still a bit slippy. But I've got a good set of tyres on, so I should be alright. Problem is people changing lanes, which is something people do. Um, 
technically I'm doing the same thing, but we see when will people learn to get out of their cars, huh? On your right. Hey, I'm not getting wet at all. And I'm making more progress than everybody else. It's really nice. Apart from all the fumes. over now. So I'm gonna try and get on the hard shoulder if I can. Once I get on the hard shoulder I should be good. Now, here we are. There we go. That's better. Woo! Don't know how well you can hear me but so I do a commentary on the way there anyway. I might fast forward some of this actually when it starts to get a bit boring. I suppose this is what London looks like now. <laughs> Big cycle track and uh, lots of stationary cars. Okay. I shouldn't be too arrogant about this though because knowing me I'll probably end up with a puncture or something and be stuck with them. That would be funny. Funny for you anyway. Not so funny for me. Yeah I've never seen it like this before. Just solid traffic all the way. These people don't stand a chance of getting in. The place is already full. I mean you can't fit, I don't know, 10,000 cars in a place that can only hold a couple of thousand. Not a great night to break down. Here's a dangerous part. Is that truck turning left, so I'll go right. Probably safer. A mouthful of diesel fumes. Yummy. Another thing about this is, of course, all the, the natural resources everyone's burning here. Doing nothing. Now, no one's moving anywhere, but everybody's just burning fuel. So you don't have that problem with the bicycle. If I stop pedaling, I'm not burning anything. And I still go forward, for a little bit anyway. Oh boy, what are these guys up to? Come on. Okie dokie. Make your minds up. <laughs> it's like, you know, they're thinking if I change lanes, I might get there faster. Fat chance. Then I'm going to be a, do a bit of one leg down driving now. It's getting pretty cramped. Oh boy. to 
here. So I think people are trying to get round it somehow or find other alternative routes, but it's not gonna happen. You guys are stuck. Salamat malam. In the land of the bicycle. <laughs> What I should have said is, uh, in the land of the pedestrian, the bicycle is king. <laughs> I reckon I shaved about five hours off my journey there. Now I've got the road to myself. <laughs> Fantastic. That'll be the same thing coming back out later. Masse. Thank you. Can't, can't go through? You can. Oh, must see. Thank you, Maxi. I thought you were saying bicycle can't go through. I heard the word bicycle. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm stuck. It's best to stop for the police because you know they carry guns. <laughs> So all these decorations are for the Sultian's 50th 
uh, Jubilee. So, Golden Jubilee. It's really nice. Lots of uh, beautiful lights and things. Salam. <laughs> Merci. This makes the wait worthwhile. <laughs> oh. of what happened so got into Bandar met up with my wife who um, drove to the outskirts like the proper outskirts of the capital and then uh, walked in uh, she parked her car at a, a park the Jubilee Park and um, I think cycling was definitely the best option I, I was pretty much the only cyclist there I saw one other person on a mountain bike and I got straight in, straight through all the roadblocks, straight past all the traffic, parked my bike right near the waterfront, walked five meters to uh, the water, watched the firework display. Um, it was nice, it was a nice display. It's great to see the bridge open. Well done you know, to all the people involved in, in doing that. It's fantastic. It's a massive, massive um, structural engineering project that Brunei has undertaken uh, to build a bridge, basically connecting the two sides of Brunei. Um, and uh, or two of the kind of the provinces of Brunei and it's a magnificent bridge I mean it's really really beautiful and, and really nice as bridges go I think it's a pretty pretty nice bridge it's only better than a lot of the bridges I've seen I love the little onion dome on the top the gold onion dome it just looks fantastic hopefully one day it might be possible to even like take a guided tour or something to the top that'd be awesome wouldn't it if they allowed members of the public like to pay to to go up to the top because the view from there must be absolutely breathtaking. You could probably see the whole of Brunei from the top of that, that tower. Uh, Brunei is not very big, so you could probably you could probably see the whole of Brunei uh, from the top of that tower. It's it's an incredible tower. So anyway, yeah, absolutely great. But the, the take home point of this video, the thing I want to get across is people need to start cycling because tonight, right? I prepared for wet weather. I had my overshoes on, which are inexpensive. I had my rain jacket on, I had my legs bare because here it, there's really no point in protecting your legs against the water usually. Um, and when it really heavily rains here, you, you just get wet anyway. But the point of the matter is everybody was standing out in the open tonight. So if it had rained, everyone would, everyone would have got wet, not just me. So the way I saw it was that I'm not going to be any wetter than anybody else if I cycle. And I was right. In fact, tonight the weather was dry. So I cycled all the way in, 
it took me 10 minutes basically to cycle all the way into the, the center whereas people in their cars they were stuck in traffic for hours literally hours um, a guy who came to my shop just before I left he'd driven from Rimba which is not too far away from where I live in Kampong Kirong and he'd been stuck in his car for for an hour just trying to on the highway just trying to get to where I am and I'm not even in the center of the, the capital I'm on the outskirts so yeah it was mental like the traffic was mental so tonight more people could have cycled I, I doubt whether a lot of those people live more than 10 kilometers away from Bandar 10 kilometers is more than possible to cycle in half an hour people should have just got on their bikes and cycled in and I even beat my wife home that's her coming home now so like I got in, cycled in, got front row seat, watched the fire display, got back on my bike, cycled home, I'm back before my wife and uh, you know, come on everyone, why don't you get on your bikes? It's a great way to travel, it's fun, it's exciting, it's fresh and if more people cycled, there'd be less traffic. So those people who do live far away could get in faster. Anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, hope to see you again sometime soon. Bye.